Hello watchers, welcome to another Gouache Diaries video. This is episode 3. This will be my second attempt using traditional gouache to create an architectural illustration. The brand of gouache I will be using is Arteza or Artez, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I was inspired by some products I received from Arch and Olive to produce an ethereal desert scene featuring Starburst a shipping container house by Whittaker Studios. I hope you guys enjoy this and learn what not to do using this media as I did have a lot of oops moments in this illustration piece. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get started. That's the reference image I'm working on for the building. The background is pretty much just seeing how it goes, basically. <laughs> I'm going to start... Oh, I realised I do need to use some something else from the box as well, and that's the binder clips um, to hopefully keep... Well, I need to put a piece underneath so I don't get paint on anything else. As far as it will go. I think that's a bit too big, actually. Um, I'm going to use the binder clips to A, keep the paper in place, and B, hopefully it's going to help keeping um, the page flat from all of the paint that's going to go on here. I'm going to do this night, well, is it night sky? It might be night sky. Um, first, do, 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 using the blue sheet from the notepad. First, I just need to trace the outline. Ignore the um, logo, that's for me testing packaging for the upcoming shop. I need a pen. Oh, no, I have one. I have a pencil. A blow sheet. I've realised on this pad, it's a good thing for me, is that they've um, put more green sheets than they have the blue or the craft paper, which I prefer because I love the green more than anything. So let's try and be economical with this paper because you can't buy it in this store. Not yet anyway, they might bring it out later. So let's just trace over lines. It doesn't matter that it's backwards because... Um, I'm going to cut it out anyway, so I can then just flip it that way. So mechanical pencil is probably not the best use, but yeah, that's worked. Um, I am going to cut it out now, otherwise I'm going to lose the lines. I'm just going to use this test piece that I had earlier to cover, help with the back. Okay, so I'm using the Liquitex uh, Parisian Blue Hue um, acrylic ink. Do, do, do. Put a couple of blobs in there. Um, I'm just going to do like a cloudy sky sort of thing. Hopefully it works out. Um, and I'm just going to use a sponge rather than a brush because I think you can get fluffy clouds better this way. Um, let's put the paper down because we know it's going to go everywhere. And just dip the sponge in. Never actually use acrylic ink on um, the Archer and Olive paper, so this is a first for me. So we'll just see how that goes. It's obviously going to curl a little, but that's all right. Um, I don't want to rinse the uh, sponge off just yet, but I do need to let it dry for a little bit. And while it's drying, how can I get it to stay flat? <laughs> Hopefully that will help a little. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I want to get some texture on that blue sky, you know, for just some little stars or something. So I'm going to use 
we some acrylic stamps. Um, I could actually use stars because Archer and Olive have the star thing with their acrylic stamps, so I could use those. Let's use those. Um, do they do no work? Little ones there. Yeah, we'll use those. I'm going to use the moon as well. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of stamping as well. So it's going to be a mixed media piece. Piece, I should say. I need to pronounce my words. Enunciate, as they say. Enunciate. Um, I'm just going to be using the blocks. Well, that fell in there, actually. Just. Just. Um, so, I'm going to use um, Drew Drop Brilliant's um, Moonlight White um, and then the Celestial set from Archer and Olive. But I don't want to use all of these stars. So, pop that on the block. Make that to dry just a little bit more. Um, these acrylic blocks, by the way, are from the March Archer and Olive. Um, and then the Celestial ones, you can just buy the the, the acrylic stamps you can buy from the um, shop. Alright, I'm happy with the dry time on that. Need that in a bit. So all I do for these stamps, probably wrong to a lot of you guys, would probably scream at me, no, you're doing it wrong, is just, I literally just tap on. And hopefully see where I've either put too much on or too little. I think that's about right. And then, and then we got some little stars on this thing. And then the moon there. So I just need to let that dry for a little bit. Um, while that's drying, I'm just going to clean up a little bit because that's the last time I'm going to be using the ink for this video. So I'll clean that up. Um, I might have to flatten it as well. Um, so when it's fully dry, I'll put it under some books and hopefully that'll work. Okay, so I've put the night sky under some books to try and flatten it down. Now I'm gonna work on the landscape. So what I'm gonna do is mask off the edges of the building because they're gonna be white, so I don't wanna get dark colors. Um, the masking I'm gonna use is this Molotov masking fluid pump marker, which is 0.2 millimeters. So, oh, I've never used this yet. So hopefully it's going to work out just fine. I'm going to say this is much easier to use than a uh, masking fluid and a brush. Because, as we all know, it ruins the brush. But they have, um, I can't remember which brand have, but they've released brushes just purely for masking fluid so i don't know if they're any good but if anyone has used them you know leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of them or if you just say just use standard cheap brushes to do it makes no difference just let me know that done so let's get some color on this paper I'm going to try and work that way across uh, which I always succeed at not um, I do have some samples just on some similar paper but I've not yet done these on craft um, I've already chosen the colors pretty much but I just need to confirm which colors I'm using 
so I want a really light pinky color so I'm going to use the ballerina pink which is a one two two Let's hope I can keep my consistency okay because I'm so used to using um, acrylic gouache which is self leveling. So I've got to be mindful of brush strokes. In the direction we're using. And obviously the consistency as well. Again with acrylic paint, uh, acrylic gouache, it's um not something you have to think about. Well, with the Liquitex anyway, with the acrylic wash and the um, turners, they're a bit more thick and gloopy. So you do have to think about those ones. Also got to remember that the traditional wash is not as opaque as acrylic wash, but is more opaque than watercolors. I don't mind going over the edge here because I'm hoping A to cover the line and B um, the night sky that we've just done will cover it as well. So I'm not too fussed about um, getting messy on those parts anyway. The great thing about traditional gouache is if your brush strokes are off, if you add water, it reactivates. So I suppose you can then sort of try and flatten them out at that point. But bear in mind it will water down your colour, make it very translucent. So be wary of that. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, yeah, the masking fluid has really ripped the paper up, so it's made it really not pretty. Um, I've tried smoothing out the edges, but obviously with it ripping the paper, you just get this horrible ripped paper effect. So I'm just going to have to deal with that. So yeah, that's good. But today... Today I want to get this building painted, um, which is basically essentially a white building. So it's um, I'm going to have to really focus on like the shadows and the detailings. Um, get my reference image up. Uh, so I think I'm just going to basically paint it right different shades of white, um, and then go over with light pens and add the det the vertical details and stuff like that. So hopefully it will look something okay. Here's just a little bit about Starburst um, that the Whitaker Studios designed and I think the design for it has just been sold so I think it's going to start construction soon. Yeah, so Starburst is a shipping container home in Joshua Tree, California. Um, the home's exoskeleton is of cuboid forms that emanate in all different directions and and are in orientated to capture the sheer beauty of the vistas sky and the desert scape Okay, so I'm just going to add some more details with 
some gloss, which I'll just tell you about in a minute, um, and just some grey Winsor & Newton fine, liner, fine liners in 0 0.1 and 0 0.3. Hopefully this is going to work out okay. Um, again, always when I'm using any type of ruler is to get one with a edge. Like so. So therefore, um, any ink bleed won't go too far underneath. One hopes. Of a Tombow N seventy five. The Tombow is water based, so it will actually activate the gouache underneath. So you just have to be very aware of that. Alright, I'm gonna leave it like that because if you mess with it too much, I know. Now my other little trick that I like to do is use a super high gloss finish on the windows. But again, you have to be careful because obviously you can reactivate like I've just done there. The um paint underneath so it'd be quick and fast with this stuff so this is the finished product um, I really enjoyed doing this actually it was quite challenging again to use um, traditional gouache as opposed to acrylic gouache I have got a lot to learn um, first of all it reactivates brush strokes they stay they show um, and also getting the consistency of the paint I really need to work on that when I'm using traditional gouache um, and also don't use Molotov masking tape on craft paper it's something to do with the fibers on the paper it sort of pulls them up more but when you use it on uh, cotton uh, watercolor paper not a problem um, or really smooth paper again not a problem but for some reason the craft paper is just it's made up differently so it really will sort of pull up the fibers of the paper so it's going to be interesting to test this craft paper with other mediums as well and see how it handles but anyway back to today's video so yeah i really hope you enjoyed sort of seeing how i created this little desert illustration um this sketchbook is actually going to be used for a co an architectural competition i've just entered which is all about desert um habitats and dwellings so for humans that is not animals <laughs> um so yeah i thought it was a great way to sort of start off in the perfect sketchbook for me to do all my Concept designs, notes, to construction details, all sorts of stuff that we get into. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the illustration I created. And let me know in the comments below if you guys prefer using sort of traditional gouache or if you prefer acrylic gouache. Um, I'm interested to know because on the other previous gouache diaries videos, when I do acrylic gouache, they're like, oh, it's not gouache because it doesn't do this. It's not like the traditional method. But when I do use traditional thing, they said, oh, you'll be better using acrylic gouache. So it's interesting to see how many people actually prefer one or the other. Um, or let me know if you just hate gouache full stop. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it'd be interesting to hear from you guys. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Um... So yeah, thank you so much for watching and in the meantime, happy architecting.